So one of your zones won't come on or won't turn off. How do you figure out whether it's the valve, the controller, or the wiring? Adrian Sanchez here for Sprinkler Warehouse. Let's get started. In order to properly troubleshoot your valve, controller, and wiring, you need either a multimeter, also called a voltmeter, or a Pro 48, which looks like this, by Armada. If you're not familiar with how to operate a voltmeter, I suggest you purchase or rent a Pro 48 from sprinklerwarehouse.com. A Pro 48 is a tester that's specifically designed for irrigation and it makes this task much simpler. If you're a homeowner, I recommend renting one. If you're a professional irrigator, you should definitely keep one of these on your truck. Let's briefly talk about what happens when the controller activates a valve. When it's time to water, the controller sends around 24 volts of electricity through a lead wire to the solenoid on the valve. The solenoid also is connected to a common wire. The common wire is also connected to all the valves in your system and heads back to the controller completing the circuit. The solenoid is made up of a coil of wire. When the coil is energized by the 24 volts of electricity, it creates a magnet that pulls the plunger up. The plunger allows the valve to open, sending water to the sprinklers. So let's cover a few possible problems you may encounter. Problem 1. If a zone won't stop running, it's almost certainly a valve problem. The kind of issue is something that would practically never be caused by a controller. So in that case, find and replace the valve. Problem 2. When a particular zone turns on and one head doesn't pop up, it's probably a sprinkler head problem. Start by replacing that head. But if there's more than one head not popping up, perhaps none of them are, then your valve isn't opening all the way. When this is the case, you'll probably see some water dribbling from the top of some of the heads. If your zone should not be on and you've got water dribbling from the top of several heads or a few heads are popping up, then the valve for that zone is not closing all the way. Either way, you've got to replace the valve. And now we'll cover the most difficult problem to diagnose, problem three. A zone won't come on. So this could be a problem with the power to the controller, the controller itself, the wiring between the controller and the valve, or the valve itself. Let's start troubleshooting. First, is your controller getting power? Is the LCD screen on? If it's not, you may not be getting power to your controller. Even if the LCD is on, it may be running on a backup battery, so it still may not be getting electricity. The GFI on your outlet may be flipped. Plug something electrical into the outlet to make sure it's working. Is it the power supply? If your controller is an indoor, outdoor controller, it probably has a pigtail cord coming from it that looks like this. But if you have an indoor controller, it'll often have a cord that looks like this with a big brick on it. This is a transformer that transforms the 110 or 120 volts coming from the wall into the 24 volts that the controller needs. If you feel comfortable using a multimeter, you can test the power to supply to see if it works and is delivering an appropriate amount of voltage to the controller. If the problem is your power supply, it's possible to replace just the power supply. Chat with one of our agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com and they'll help you determine if your power supply is available for purchase. So, assuming your controller is getting power, Next, you'll check to see if the controller is working properly. Set your controller to start watering the affected zone. If you're using a multimeter, set it to a setting that will test for around 24 volts AC. You should get a reading of somewhere between 20 and 40 volts. If your reading is low, the problem is your controller and it needs to be replaced. To test using the Pro 48, toggle the switch on top to the middle. That is the clock test setting. Black clip on the common, red clip on the zone you want to test. At the timer, make sure you manually turn on the zone you're testing. On the Pro 48, you should get a green light where it says Clock 24 VAC. If it doesn't light up, your controller needs to be replaced. If your clock is working correctly, your problem is either your valve or the wires going to your valve. Unscrew the common wire from your controller and unscrew the lead from the affected zone. Using the Pro 48, turn the toggle to solenoid. Connect the clips to the wires. It will light up either good or light up short or open. If it lights up short or open, you have a problem with your wiring or with your solenoid. If you're using the voltmeter for this step, turn the meter to the lowest possible resistance setting. 
Wrap the wires around the voltmeter probes or touch it to the wires. The proper amount of resistance for a valve will depend on the brand and model of the valve but should fall somewhere between 20 to 60 ohms. A short either in the wire or in the valve solenoid will show something close to zero. A broken wire, an unconnected wire, or a malfunctioning solenoid will show one or OL, whatever the same thing it shows when your voltmeter probes are not touching anything. This model shows a one. The next step will have to happen at the valve. So reattach your wires on the controller. If you don't know where your valve is, you can rent a valve locator from Sprinkler Warehouse. To test the valve, you need to have the wires on the solenoid unconnected to any other wiring, so unhook the wiring. Using the Pro 48, set the toggle switch to solenoid. Put the clips on the wires coming from your solenoid. It will read short or open or good. If it shows short or open, replace the valve. Or if you're using the multimeter, set it to test resistance like we did earlier. Look for a reading between 20 to 60 ohms. On sprinklerwarehouse.com, we have the technical specs for our valves. Most valve manufacturers make the resistance specs available, or you can chat online with our customer service agents. They can find the specs for you. If you're not getting the proper reading, somewhere between 20 to 60 ohms, replace the valve. Technically, you could just replace the solenoid if the rest of the valve is good, but the difference between the cost of a solenoid and a valve is pretty small. So we highly recommend changing out the valve. Valves do eventually wear out, so why not get a brand new valve in there that should give you years of service before you have to touch it again. If your valve tests good, you probably have a wiring problem. Set the controller to run on the zone you are testing. Back at the valve, if you're using the Pro 48, flip the toggle switch to the clock test and attach the clips to the wires. Doesn't matter which is which. If the Pro 48 shows short or open, then your problem is your wiring. To check the wires using the multimeter, set the multimeter to check for 24 volts VAC. Attach the wires to the probes on your multimeter and look for a reading somewhere between 20 and 40 volts. Once again, make sure the zone you're testing is running. If you're getting a reading of somewhere around zero or you see one or OL, the problem is your wiring. Your solutions for this are, number one, see if there are any wire connectors that have come off, or see if there is a place where the wire has become corroded at the wire connector. Number two, run a new wire. If you happen to have a multi-strand wire like this one coming into the valve, and one of the strands in the multi-wire is not being used, then boy, you're in luck. Your new wire has already been run. Just swap out that wire to the valve and swap the wire at the controller. Number three, use a doubler. A doubler will allow you to operate two valves using only one lead wire. Chat with one of our Sprinkler Warehouse agents and they'll tell you how to set it up. Remember, Sprinkler Warehouse has everything for your irrigation needs, so your trees, lawn, flower beds, and gardens are lush and beautiful. And if you have any questions about our products, chat with one of our superb customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really know their stuff and they will get you squared away. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction. For Sprinkler Warehouse, I'm Adrian Sanchez. Later, irrigator.